for today's quiz, we have a vernier force plate. We have the old vernier software connected to a very old computer. It still works. In fact, I like this version. This is not an app. This is where you would literally download the program onto the computer. Regardless, our question today is if I have a basketball and a bag of sand. And I've used this scale to ensure that they're the same exact mass, which happens to be 574 grams. If we were to drop these onto the force plate, which would have a greater force? That's our question for today. And I'll hold up the quiz. As always, mark out your answer as completely as you can, and then list how confident you are in your answer. The response that we hear from students over and over is the bag of sand will clearly have a greater force than a bouncing basketball. And they feel that because they've heard these expressions like, oh, you hit the ground like a bag of wet cement or a bag of sand or something like that. And a basketball will often say, look, it's light and it's gonna bounce back up and literally just kind of float up into the air. So that's the most typical response that we get. However, some students will say, well, if you're dropping these from the same height and they have the same exact mass, the force should be the same. And those are the two responses that we get over and over. I wanna talk a little bit about how we're gonna analyze this. The Vernier system is going to end up using this force plate now it's a black box to us. I didn't create this, I didn't make the electronics, so I don't know exactly how it's working. That's gonna be a problem anytime you have experimentalism going. In this case, when the ball is hitting onto the force plate, we must ensure that that force plate is gonna re record the maximum force. And you might think, well, that's what it's designed for, but not so fast. Whenever I hooked up this sensor into the Vernier system, there is a digital and then there is an analog channel. This went into the analog channel. That does not mean it's continuous though. And I'm gonna show you this. I'm gonna drop this basketball several times onto this force plate. And we'll set the Vernier system to collect, we'll say 10 times a second. And that sounds like a lot, but you're gonna see a major problem here. And I might as well explain it first. When this is hitting into the plate, it's gonna happen you know, very quickly. If we sample right before or right after when it has its maximum impact, we can miss it altogether. And I'll show you how inconsistent this is. If we set our sample ratio, our sample rate too low, then I'll increase it. Give me a second. I've set the program so it's gonna record 10 samples per second. I already have the little arrow on Colexa. Hopefully I can just hit this button and I'll drop this several times in a row to show you the variability that we get. You can see on this graph that we missed the hit most of the time. Only one of those bounces hit. I've now set the data collection to 500 samples per second. Before, when it was hitting, I might have been sampling before or after the hit. Hopefully at 500 samples per second, we'll be able to get the maximum hit. And you might ask yourself, why not always leave it at 500? Well, it bogs down the Vernier system and the computer. It might not even display in real time. It'll show up afterwards. As you can see, we captured most of the hits and they're fairly consistent. Now we're ready to actually drop our bag of sand and compare that with our basketball.
I have a new run ready. All we need to do is hit collect. I'll drop the basketball five times and I'll try to drop the bag of sand five times. I have a little bar to let me know that I'm always dropping from the same height each time. You can see that I have one, two, three, four, five of my basketball hits and only one of the sand. I'm going to redo this and make sure that uh, this is not a fluke with the sand. But right away you can see the sand is going to have much less force. And you can see again that the bag of sand delivers much less force, roughly half the force of that basketball. I've zoomed in and auto scaled my data. While it's not perfect, you could see I have three hits from the bag of sand. It's still not perfect you could see that there's a little bit of variation there. I would like to crank it up to a thousand samples per second, but that's really the limit of what this vernier system can do. Uh, it has a hard time and sometimes locks up. But if you replicate this over and over, the general trend that you find is the basketball delivers much more force than the bag of sand. Why is this? Well, first of all, when the bag of sand is dropping and the masses are the same, so that's not a variable, they're be both being dropped at the same height, from the same height, and they should end up hitting at the same velocity. But that's where everything is going to change. We know that impulse is equal to the change in momentum. So if we think of the change in momentum, when the bag of sand goes from a velocity to zero, it has a change in velocity, which is going to be proportional to the force. Not exactly. We have to get time in there. But in general, force is proportional to your change in momentum. Let's say this is coming down at a negative one and then goes to zero. You have a difference of one, where the basketball, when it comes down and it's going to change its velocity to zero, that would also be a change in velocity of negative one. However, it is bouncing back up. So if it goes from negative one to zero back to positive one, negative one to zero to positive one, is nearly twice the difference in the change in velocity as the sand. So the object that bounces in this case is going to have much more force than the object that just splats. That's your quiz for today.